Welcome back to Racing. We've actually come out to the R&D department here at Crane Cams. We've got the lead design engineer with us, Ralph Johnson. Ralph, great to have you on the show. Thank you tell, very much. Tell us a little bit about you. your history. Well, quick and simply, I went to school at GMI with General Motors. I worked at Chevrolet, uh, drafting board, uh, experimental engineering, and proving grounds. I had the pleasure and honor of being in on the original small block Chevy. Graduated into the fuel department and worked on the fuel injection, which led me out into the race field with Chevrolet in the winter of 56-57. I put in eight years with General Motors, uh, 15 years with Holley Carburetor, uh, 18 years on R&D contracts with Smokey Eunuch, and 18 years with Crane Cam. You had it all up, and I'm 75 years old. But today, you're going to look at something uh, that's um, probably pretty much misunderstood, I think, by a lot of racers. Well, I'd like to talk to you about valve geometry, rocker arm, and push rod relationship. On the engine, we have mounted a production type of stamped steel Chevrolet rocker arm. But instead of being a 1 5 ratio, this is a 1 6 ratio. I can change the ratio of this stamped steel rocker by effectively changing the angle of attack on the valve through the center ball stud. This is accomplished by changing the length of the push rod. Normal Chevrolet production in the early years, uh, cast iron head valve geometry. If you go shorter on the push rod, you can go 50 thousandths at a time and find it, or you can go 100 to 150 shorter, and you can make a 1.5 rocker into a 1.6 rocker. Later production and the aftermarket production because of different, slightly different geometries and uh, different valve angles, you've got to run some checks and see whether you increase the ratio by a longer or a shorter push rod because it can affect it in either direction. I am going to lead you through taking the lift with dial indicators in every hundred thousandths lift on the cam and I have the recording with dial indicators on the valve motion. All right, we'll lead you through this. I am now going to take it up to 100 thousandths lift. I will read and I have recorded the opening at the valve. 200, reading, recording, 300, reading, recording, 400, reading, recording, and max. Max, 666, and I max on the cam lift at 417. Now, I'm gonna take you through the process so that you can see I am not going to change or tamper with the rocker arm in any way. And you will notice that at no time do his fingers <laughs> leave his hands. I am just going to change the length of the push rod by 150 thousandths, and then I will show you how it affects the ratio. And just for layman's terms on this, Ralph, you know, I guess basically what you're talking about is the angle that the rocker arm sits and the way it mates to the valve stem is the geometry that makes the difference in this lift, right? Absolutely correct. This is just the attack angle and the swipe across the valve. We have plenty of room over the valve to run this arc, so we won't have any problems in that area. If you would carry this to a far enough extreme with the length of the push rod change, uh, you would have to stop just short of coming near the edge of the valve. Unless, of course, that was a desirable place to be, then you could run with a lash cap which gives you a much broader area to run against, and you would have no problem coming off the edge of the valve. I guess the lash cap would do a couple things. It would uh, give you a little retainer clearance and more diameter to run across. Absolutely. I figure it as a help 100% all the way around. Now, I would like to take you back through this whole sequence again with only the length of the push rod change. 
Reading, recorded, 200,000. Reading, recorded, 300,000. Reading, recorded, 400. Reading, max lift. I have gone from initially 1.60 to a 1.65 rocker arm by only changing the length of the push rod. This could be changed further and the rate would increase. Now, is there a point where it will not help the motor anymore? Definitely, depending upon your breathing. In other words, if you had a series of rocker arms and you were doing max power at six to six five ratio, you would see a loss by the time you got to 1.8. Yes, if you cannot breathe sufficiently, that would be the limit and there's no sense to open it that far. Because at that point, you're just going, putting extra stress on the valve train. Correct. For no practical output gain or anything else. But this shows you what can be accomplished with a basic change in the engine to change the output. In this case, just a different length push rod. And basically what this is doing is it's allowing the valve to open farther, sooner, and get stay wider and flow more throughout the opening, right? Yes. In the max, in changing the ratio from a 1.60 to a 1.65, I have increased the opening 22 thousandths. This is going to let you breathe in a lot more air and fuel, and the consequence of that is more horsepower, and that's what we're all looking for. And that's some pretty cheap horsepower, too. We got around a commercial break. Coming right back. Stick with us. Welcome back to Racing TV. We talked about ways to improve your lift. Now let's talk about some things that you need to look out for. All right. <clears throat> when we're going to set up, and in this case, I've chosen the shaft mount rocker, we need to check the roller relationship to the tip of the valve. The best way is to blue the valve, work it through the operational arc. You can put a push rod in and do it, or you can do it by hand, and with the bluing, you will see the pattern or the trace on the valve stem. I favor a trace from the center line slightly toward the outside. Some engine builders would prefer it to rotate about the center line. The width of your contact point will be approximately 35 thousandths. In any rate, this is adjustable in the case of the stand rocker by shimming up and down. And you may need to do this if you do a valve job and you sink the valves in, that'll change this position. Or in order to get the right spring height and weight from your springs, especially large diameter, you may have to run a valve stem 100, 150 thousandths longer. In that case, you should re-blue, recheck, and make sure that you're happy, truly happy, with where the true roller contact is. Then you won't have any problem up top in the engine. The other thing at this time that you should check is to make sure that you have sufficient clearance between the spring retainer and the underside of the rocker arm. You can sight and make sure, or you can feeler gauge, you can blue. If you have any contact, then very slight cutting or grinding, or set up on a milling machine. The rocker arms leave the factory with a sufficient diameter with a 1 8 radius for clearance in there. Now, when you do that, Ralph, uh, if you have to do a little grinding there, should you kind of chamfer the edges a little bit to uh, prevent stress risers? Or? The best thing, yes, I would use a small ball cutter. Do not get near the outside edge of the rocker arm because that puts a stress riser there. If you can get a C by the production cut, we stay about a hundred thousandths inside the outside edge. This stops any stress risers and gives you a clean setup in there. Any time that you change anything on the setup or when you initially start, this check of bluing should be part of the original calibration. And then you go back and double check all your ratios and make sure everything's correct. Right, okay. And that's, this is something too that a uh, guy with a stock uh, stamp rocker doesn't have to worry about. No, stock stamp steel, that's pretty much bulletproof as the factory. So 
This is just to double check to make sure that you have total running clearance and a good solid well-built engine that does not have any undue interference. Okay. Well, I think we've covered a lot here on uh, valve lift and valve train geometry. Then, Ralph, it's been great having well, you on the race so. seat here. Thank you. Great. I want to say thank you well, very thank, much. Thank I've you. enjoyed this. We appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions about Racing TV, go to RacingTV.com. See you next week right here on Race Scene. Eric Sandler.